Hello, Lightbenders. Bruno here from Lightbend USA and Photography. I'm coming to you from Perth in Western Australia. If this is the first time that you're visiting the channel, welcome. And if you've been following what I've been doing, then I appreciate you coming back as well. My quest for improving my focusing on my view camera has been a journey that I've been on for a little while now, but it's getting better. Focusing seems to be a lot easier when we view the image, you know, uh, on so social media and stuff like that. But when you get to see like a fine art print for people like Clyde Butcher and so on, you can actually count every little pieces of detail if you have to count them in their shots. And then you wonder, how do they do it? Some of us might think that no, because they're, sh they're shooting uh, 8 by 10 uh, cameras, that's why they get so much detail into the images. In parts they do, but the focusing technique that they use got to be spot on in order for them to get that detail. Because you may have the great camera, but if misfocused, then the image is not going to be as great. So, for that reason, I've been trialing, testing a couple of the techniques that I've been shown and so on. And uh, still, I keep telling you about it. Why don't you come along with me so you can see what I'm doing? All right, guys, so here I am at this station and I'm trying to set up very quickly because the sun is going to come out in the next five to ten minutes. And uh, I'm just trying to get my composition right now or my interim composition. And because, because I'm pointing at an angle like this, you know, this side of the building here is very, very massive. And then that side there, because of the receding line, and so on and so for that reason I want to rectify that perspective just a little bit so I'm gonna swing my lens you know I'm gonna use my back standard you know to correct uh, that perspective just a little bit so what I've done I swing like this because uh, this side is on this side of the glass all right so I want to make it just a little bit bigger so because of that I got to, have to bring it just there just a touch and uh, so now I'm going to have to level up my camera and I'm going to be doing both rear and front standard and this is going to be a bit tricky because I'm right here on the edge of this fence and I don't want my spirit level to drop that way otherwise I'll be in the fence. So this is gonna be this is going to be a bit challenging because uh, I know well that this time image plan focusing might not be my only solution to covering my depth of field because I think I'm gonna have to do a swing here and I got a swing from my rear standard and I'm gonna have to swing my front as well <clears throat> like this baby it won't be long before I get myself in trouble here and another problem that we have you know because the buildings are not a standalone building and then we got trees in the back and I'm, I'm not sure if you can see in the video I think I might have missed a shot already like the pre pre sunrise uh, shot but that's okay All right, let's get to focusing. Just like any of the other shots that I usually take, I have to trap image plane focusing first, just to see what my bellows movements are like. And then decide if swing is gonna be required. Okay, so I'm gonna leave it here. So I got a seven millimeter uh, bellows movement, and that's huge, you know, for the lens that I'm using. So, and for that reason, a swing is gonna be required. So now I got the nearest and the, the farthest edge of my depth of field, and then I need to find out if that swing is helping. So this here should be my far. Okay, that's it, just right there. 
159 that's only three millimeter and that's where i need to be so now i'm gonna set my focus so i went from seven millimeters to three millimeters for this uh I shot here with my bellows movement. Now I know that my minimum aperture to, to, to shoot this is gonna be f16, but I'm not just gonna do that yet. I'm gonna close my lens and see where I would stop out without having to uh, see what's going on with the focus. Wheel. All right, so I'm gonna use my loop here and close my aperture and try to see some of the things that I think should be in focus and see if they are. So it looks like a okay at least some of the major areas that i know i want it in focus they look in focus so let's see here all right so we got exactly f22 and i'm only one stop away from what image plane focusing dictated so i'm happy to go here because it told me that the minimum aperture that i need is going to be f22 I mean f16 so from here i can close down a little bit just because my eyes aren't so good and i have to do everything with my eyes and then using image plane focusing it would help me to confirm that my eyes did what I, they're supposed to do even though i do um even though i am visually impaired in some ways all right so i'm happy with what i need to do right now so now i just need to meter and fire a shot and for this particular shot, I'm gonna shoot uh, a Portra 160 and maybe do a, a black and white version as well. Uh, the ambient light is almost matching, I think the brightest part of uh, the train station down there, which is the, the front of the platform. I'm gonna ignore those bright uh, light bulbs. I'm rating my Portra 160 at, at 80 anyway. So, my sky is two steps brighter than my platform, which is getting all of that light there to be there. I'm going to be getting someone coming over very shortly to talk to me because uh, I'm using tripod and cameras and stuff and I'm not supposed to be doing this here unless if I have permission, which I do. So, I don't have to worry about a thing. All right. So, by the look of this... I need to shoot this at uh, f22 eight seconds and they're using portra 160 i believe that's uh, 15 seconds but i need to take into account that the sun has not actually risen above the horizon yet so that means that it's going to be getting brighter and brighter as well so my exposure that i set up here i may have to bring it down so I'm going to be shooting this at f22 and one third at 8 seconds, which makes 15 seconds. All right. So let's set up here. Okay. Going to pull this baby out. And I kind of like it at this time because uh, the train, the trains will start going around six o'clock and uh, I am here just on time. This is the image. I like it just the way it is. And uh, what could I have done here differently? If I had a choice, I would actually get near the track and I set my camera a little bit lower so I can lose those trees in the back there. So I can have... Uh, just the building you know uh, mounting right there into the sky and uh, but unfortunately you know i couldn't so this is the best that i could get but yet i like the exposure and uh, i like the sharpness in the image if i was to post this on social media nobody would know the difference because everything is legible there but if you were to take this another step further by looking at the detail a little bit closer if i was to print this like in a very 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 large format 
and so on, then we would see that everything that we can see that's legible aren't actually tack sharp as I would like them to be. And then this is the problem that I've been having. And this is what I'm trying to find a way to make sure that I get everything tack sharp and crisp all the way through the depth of field that I set. You can see here on the blue ticket sign, you can read the word ticket, but it's not actually as clean as possible. Emergency can be seen as well. Information can be seen and everything on that uh, upright standing uh, you know, sign, we can see that, but yet I need those to be tack sharp as if you were standing right in front of it. So this is the challenge that I've been having and uh, I'm getting closer and closer to getting it done. But if you'd like to come on a journey, you know what to do. And I'd be happy to have you along the way as well. So until then, cheers.